Having a blog is great. You get to talk about things that you're passionate about. You get to engage with other people who share those same passions. Or at least you do if people can find your blog. There is hundreds of blogs out there and you need to be able to get people to yours specifically. Well, have no fear. It's not as difficult as you think. And even if you're struggling at the moment, there are ways to get around that. And I am going to show you exactly how to do it. Our first tip is actually really simple, but it's something that a lot of people and maybe even you overlook because you're creating something specifically based on your experiences, but you've forgotten maybe who the people reading your blog are or who are the people you want to be reading your blog. So you need to have a think about that and maybe create a little profile. So start asking yourself some questions. Who are the people reading your blog? What challenges do they face? And what kind of things are they expecting when they find your blog? What you're trying to create is something called a buyer persona. And this is how you're going to nail down who it actually is you need to target. And if you target the right people, you're providing exactly what these people want, then they will naturally find reasons to be on your blog, to spend more time on your blog and to read multiple articles within your blog. It all kind of comes together. And the more questions you ask, the more narrow you can get with who these people are, then the more accurate you're going to be delivering to the people, these fantastical people that are going to be on your blog. Make sense? Of course it does. Next up, we're going to tie right into what I just said with personalization. You do what we did above and therefore you can personalize things, even maybe occasionally to directly to individuals or individual groups. The more you personalize, the better connection you have, the more people will return and the more word of mouth will spread and the easier you will find your life as a blogger. Do step one, then do step two you're already well on your way. We've already spoken about working out what people want. Well, a good way of doing that is to do a little bit of research. Keyword research. What is it that people are actually searching for? And can you meet a demand for what people are searching for? A really good tool is something like SEMrush or our very own WP Beginner Keyword Generator. Both of these are going to help you find the specifics that you need to be writing about or pushing to people so that they are then finding the exact content that they want. But again, look at step one. We wanted to do that in step one. So why not use this to help you? These things shouldn't be done in isolation. You've got really great investigation in step one. You're using the information in step one to generate step two. Step three that we're talking about now is going to help you do step one properly and then give the content that you actually want out to your potential readers or customers or clients, whoever it might be. Don't use them in isolation, link everything together. Your keyword research is also going to help you increase your SEO, your search engine optimization. If people are searching for the keywords that you're talking about, you are more likely to pop up higher up on search results. Google likes it. Today, I also want to highlight a really solid tool for people who are blogging on WordPress and that's easy digital downloads. And as the name might imply, it's there to help you with easy digital downloads. We're talking here about maybe WordPress plugins, PDFs, eBooks, anything like that. If you have those items and you want to try and manage them in the way of a store on your blog, then easy digital downloads is definitely something that you need to check out. You've got easy store management, powerful reporting, and easy digital downloads integrates with hundreds of different apps. So whatever you're using at the moment, maybe to generate your particular content, You'll be able to use that in conjunction with easy digital downloads in order to get your product to your customer, to your audience, that little bit faster and that little bit easier. If you want to check it out or any of the other plugins that I've mentioned today, then please check out the links down in our description. Okay, next step, we're kind of following a little bit of a flow now. So now we've got loads of great ideas. We've got keywords coming out of our ears. We don't really know what to do with them. Make yourself an editorial calendar. Take all of the ideas you've got that are based on the people that you have created that you're sure are going to want to use your site and then create a calendar around that. Don't get overwhelmed with too many ideas or trying to rush things out. 
create a steady, consistent flow that matches all of those keywords that we just discovered. Editorial Calendar is really gonna help you keep things under control and just stop your brain from exploding, maybe? Highly recommend an editorial calendar. Sometimes creating that calendar can be a bit stressful in itself, so we recommend a couple of tools, Asana and Trello. They're really good at giving you kind of a bird's eye view of everything and just keeping everything calm and organized and collected. Can't stress how important this can be, especially as you grow. I touched on it just there, but our next point is consistency. Don't go crazy, don't get lazy. Just nice sweet spot in the middle. Don't think that you can put out three blog posts a day because you've got all these ideas. Slow it down and deliver people exactly what they expect, when they expect it. If they're expecting posts from you on a Monday and a Friday, give them posts on a Monday and a Friday and your calendar is gonna help you organize that. Be consistent. Next up, we're gonna talk about creating comprehensive content. And I don't necessarily mean making every single article a big, long, comprehensive list. What you need are pillar articles. Now you need these for a couple of reasons. One of them is for SEO. Google loves these long pillar articles containing lots of information and lots of keywords, and it'll help you rank that little bit higher. But the other reason is these are gonna be articles they're gonna consistently draw people to your website and back to your website. Say you provide information, a pillar article specifically about one piece of information that goes into as much detail as possible is really gonna help provide a cornerstone, a pillar of your website. Now there's no reason you can't break these down into smaller articles as you move along. A good way to select what these pillar articles should be is to look at the keywords and the keyword phrases that we spoke about earlier. What are the most promising ones? They're probably going to be your pillar articles, your long form content. Next up, we're talking about making content readable. Now, I don't necessarily mean legible here. I mean readable. How is it presented on the screen? You don't want giant blocks of text. People are going to struggle to actually read that or they're going to lose interest. Make sure you have enough space around your text. Break it up with videos, break it up with images where you can. Short blocks of text are the best for maintaining people's attention and making things as easy as possible for people to read. Size sentences, friendly tones, making things as easy as possible. Because let's be honest, these days, us humans, we don't have the longest attention spans. So even when you write, you might want to take that into consideration. And it is shown to be more effective when you can be bite-sized and to the point. I've touched upon SEO, search engine optimization, a couple of times in other points. And here, this is the whole point. SEO, search engine optimization. How are you going to get search engines, particularly Google, to rank you highly enough so that people are going to find you? There's no point you being on the second, third page of a Google search because nobody goes that far. When was the last time you clicked on the second page of a Google search? It doesn't happen. So you need to use SEO to bump yourself further up. And one of the best ways, probably the best way to do that is to use a tool like All-in-One SEO. You don't have to be an SEO guru. Something like All-in-One SEO is gonna guide you through it and really help you maximize your SEO rankings and get you that little bit further up and hopefully increase the amount of audience that you have. Next up, Write a good headline, be catchy, get people to click on your article. Obviously, we're on YouTube, it's the same theory. You have to see a headline that attracts you, that gives you the information that you need as to what's in the blog post, but is also punchy and makes you think, oh yeah, I can't miss that. You want unmissable content, unmissable headlines, and you just have to learn how to write them. Maybe check what other people are doing that are in your niche. Check what attracts you, what's going to get you to click, and then use those same principles to generate your own headlines. You can have the greatest content in the world, but if the headline doesn't grab people, people aren't going to click on it anyway. Next up, we're going to talk about linking, both internal linking and backlinking. Internal linking is exactly what it sounds. If you're writing something and there's an element in there where you can link to another article on your blog, absolutely do that. There's two reasons, two main reasons. 
One being, of course, it's an opportunity for your audience to click on that and go and find another blog article and read it. It's really great to have people do that. The other is that it's gonna allow Google to see those links and that means that Google has more context for what your particular article is about and that's gonna improve your SEO because Google understands what it's trying to push. Again, we're talking about SEO here simply by linking things into the correct place. Now, also we have backlinks. Now, backlinks don't come from your own website. They come from external sites and link into your website. And these, again, are huge for SEO. Google loves backlinks to help your website perform. The easiest way to add backlinks is I'm sure you've got social media profiles. Make sure your link's added, your Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, whatever it is, make sure that your site is linked from there. Nice and simple, really great backlink. But another really solid way of doing it, and these are absolute gold to Google and to your search results, is if say you write a guest article or you collaborate with somebody, try and get backlinks from other websites, from other people that are in your niche. It can really, really be helpful to boost your website just by writing on somebody else's website. As well as enhancing your SEO, you're also enhancing the authority of your site because you're seen on multiple platforms and you're seen as an expert in your area. So get collaborating. And finally, again, we're gonna concentrate on something we mentioned a little bit earlier, the visuals. What does it look like? And we're gonna do that with pictures, images, and video. Embed them into your article because it just makes things easier to read and your audience is just gonna have a much easier time going through your articles and they're more likely to return. Now, if you are using videos, use something like YouTube. Don't embed them directly onto your site because that's gonna use up too many resources. Use YouTube and add them on, but then you're also on YouTube at that point. So what you've got is your doubling up. You've got YouTube exposure, you've got your blog, and from YouTube to your blog, you've also got a backlink, so everything starts to work together. There are some great tips on how to increase your audience and also keep hold of your audience for that little bit longer. If you're looking to make a bit of money off your blog, then make sure you click this video right here. But that's all from me here today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've been James, have a good one, and I'll see you soon.